This is a tutorial video showing how to use Blue Sky Plan in the wizard mode. And so this is going to be just a routine number 19 implant. Uh, and I've got an accompanying PDF that will go with this as well as the case downloads in case you want to practice this. So when we're doing a basic surgical guide, we're going to go ahead and launch Blue Sky Plan and choose surgical guides. And for simple cases, you can launch the wizard by just hitting one or two implant cases. Once you click that button, you'll need to tell it what type of STL you're going to import. So a model STL would be the kind of STL you have coming straight out of an intraoral scanner, out of a desktop scanner. If your model is coming from a CT scan of a stone model, you would choose model CT. And if you're getting your uh, model from a CT scan of an impression, then you would choose one of these two models. Uh, but we're going to do just a standard model STL. This is a model from a um, desktop scanner. And then also choose the surgical kit type that you want to use. There's many, many different options here. In this example, you will use the Blue Sky Bio fully guided surgical kit and click OK. First step it's going to ask you to do is to import the DICOM files. So these should be saved from the comb beam as raw DICOM files no embedded viewers on them. And this example will do case one DICOM. I'll click OK. And in this step, what you want to do is limit your field of view to the pertinent area that you're working on. Uh, in an implant case, we don't really have much need for the orbit. We don't have much need for the spine. And all of those are going to cause your field of view to be more zoomed out. And it will also cause the computer to be a little slower because of all the data it has to crunch. So limit your field of view just down to the mandible and the maxilla. Uh, you can do more if you like, but I find that's usually sufficient. And then click OK. And in the first step, it's going to ask you to begin mapping the nerve. It'll do the right nerve first, and then you'll do the left nerve after that. Now, in this example, we're doing an implant on the left-hand side, so there's really not a need to map this right-hand nerve. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next and just skip that step, and now we'll go to the left-hand nerve. And now in this step, it's asking us to detect the left mental foramen, and this is the one we do want to map. So if you come up here to the cross-sectional window, you can just use the scroll ball on the mouse and scroll back and forth until you have this slice uh, right over the top of the mental foramen. And once you see the mental foramen in view, go ahead and stop scrolling. So you can see it right here. And now that we see that, you've got this crosshairs with a nerve beside it. You're ready to go ahead and drop a point inside of the foramen. So click one time inside the foramen and it's going to go ahead and map the nerve. Now you've got the ability to also scroll through here and if we maximize this to full screen, if you were scrolling through and you see that you don't like uh, one of the nodes, then anywhere you see one of these white nodes, you can actually grab that and move it a little bit. And so always go through and check and make sure that you're happy with the nerve mapping. Um, as I scroll through here, I don't see any problems with it. So I'll go back and minimize this screen and now we're ready to click next. In the next step, it wants you to upload the STL model. So I've got that saved on my desktop, and this is called Case 1 Gingiva. You can see the preview of the STL on the right-hand side. And once I like it, I'll click OK. And this is a huge improvement over previous builds. Now there's an auto-stitching mechanism. So all that you have to do is tell the, the software which jaw this is, in this case a mandible, and then click OK. And as you see here, the software does an excellent job of stitching this. I do always go back and make sure that I like the stitch. So when you scroll up and down through like the axial slice here, notice that the model outline disappears at the same rate as what the comb beam data underneath does. And it's the same thing on the cross-sectional window. I always go to that and we'll scroll through and make sure that I like the stitch across the entire arch. If you didn't like the stitch, then you can always go up here to manual alignment. You can go back and choose one of the other methods of alignment. But because this looks good, I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And in the next step, you'll go ahead and choose the tooth that you would like to import. So we do want to do a prosthetically driven treatment plan. So you have multiple libraries of teeth. In this example, I'll use the Mitch Hurst Flat Anatomy Library. And I'm going to choose tooth number 19. We'll just highlight that. You can also choose your implant at this stage. So come down here and click on implant. And this is going to bring up the different implant options. You've got the Blue Sky Bio implants and many others in here. We'll use a Blue Sky Bio Max and we'll do a 5 by 10 implant. 
you want to choose the jaw orientation this one's a mandible and once I've done all that I can now click OK and click OK again and now you're ready to add the tooth so wherever you first click on this STL model that's where it's going to drop the tooth and the implant so I like to reorient the model by just grabbing out here in space don't grab on the actual STL model because it will drop the uh, tooth in there but just grab out in space spin it to where you can see this if you need to zoom it's the right mouse hold down and push forward and now we can just left click and drop the tooth and the implant in position so in this first step what we want to do is we just want to position the tooth so I can grab this widget uh, we can go up and down here you could also bodily move the tooth by just grabbing on the red portion of the tooth not on the rotation rings but just on the red portion so let's pull this down into the uh, plane of occlusion and let's try to line it up similar to what the other teeth in the arch are and then also look at it from the occlusal view and try to get your central grooves lined up and if you need to make the tooth narrower or wider you can hover on it and you'll see these purple nodes out to the lateral of the tooth grab that and you can stretch the tooth up or down so with that done that tooth looks like it's in the correct position now I do always just double check it from multiple angles and that does look okay so now we'll click next and at this stage you're just positioning the implant and so if you'd like a bit bigger field of view you can grab this line in the middle and just stretch this over a bit but what you're in right now is the tangential view that's what's being shown here you can zoom again with your right mouse button but to move the implant you can just grab on the red portion of the implant and bodily move this and then if you would like to rotate it you can grab the rotation ring and what I'm looking to do is just parallel the adjacent roots of the teeth and if I wanted to look at this from a different view just hover in this window and use the scroll ball on your mouse and that will spin this implant on its axis where you can see it from multiple different uh, points of view so I'm going to align this to where it's coming right through the central groove for this particular implant I want to be about a millimeter subcrestal and then again making sure that I'm in the middle of the space and also paralleling the adjacent roots so you can see it emerging right through the center here and you can always see uh, whatever movements you make you can see how they affect your emergence profile over here this line would indicate where a screw access hole would be and so if I was to rotate this out of position you see how that affects on the left hand side your prosthetic uh, emergence but let's bring this back I want to be right in the center of the tooth and with that done now we can click next and at this point you're ready to make the guide you've already told the software what guided kit you're using it knows what implant size you've got in there and so a tube has been placed according to whatever it needs to be for that particular guided kit and that particular implant so all you need to do now is just draw the perimeter of your guide and we're going to do that by holding down the shift button and you see whenever I push the shift button it brings up a crosshairs and now while still holding that shift button I will left click and just begin drawing the guide outline and I try to make this right at the CEJs of the teeth now eventually you're gonna run out of model and you're not gonna be able to just draw this all in one big motion you need to draw a portion and then when you run out of model view you can rotate this by letting go of the shift button and then push shift again and continue your line on so I'll go over to about the canine and then come up and over the incisal edge and now I'll reorient and look at it from the lingual and then continue my line on so just all the way around the arch right about the level of the CEJs and then try to go back to where you started and that should close the curve so you see that now we have an entirely closed uh, guide perimeter now at this stage if you wanted to fine-tune this you can grab any of these nodes and by left clicking you can move those around so if there's anywhere that one of the nodes is not in the position you like just grab it and move it over but this looks good so we're ready to go ahead and fabricate the guide however if you do want to create some windows in the guide you can do that by right clicking on the model at this stage and you'll see a button that says add window so let's click on that and just add a window for demonstration sake and with this widget you can stretch this window you can bodily move it you can go up and down with it and generally when you're doing a window you're only trying to expose maybe the cusp tip um, because that's going to give you a visualization that you're fully seated when you're in the surgery so I'm just going to do that this right on this canine 
and you can see here that it's exposing that cusp tip. You don't want to go too deep because then your guide will be very thin here and you'll risk breaking it. So with that done, we're ready to create the guide and I'll do that by clicking next. And now you see the completed surgical guide with a window right here on this canine cusp tip. And that's basically it for the wizard workflow. So the only thing left to do now is to click next and that will allow you to export your guides. So choose your destination folder. In this case, we'll use my documents. I'll click OK and it's going to export several files. It will export the surgical guide. It will export uh, the, the completed Blue Sky plan file and then also a drill report. You have the option to go ahead and complete a case approval form uh, before you uh, finish this. I'm going to opt to not do that right here. Um, we'll just go ahead and not send this right now. And once you close that out, you see that it does generate the drill report for you. This is just an automatically generated PDF. And these are really nice to print out and have to look at during surgery. Uh, this is nice to not have to deglove in the middle of the procedure and navigate through the comb beam volume. And so we've got the drill report. It tells us everything that we're going to need to do, what the implant size is, what drill we're going to go up to with that particular kit. So that's going to be saved. And if you want to open the folder where all of these are stored, just click open folder. And as you see in my documents, I've got the drill report, I've got the surgical guide STL, and the finalized treatment plan. So if you wanted to go back and open this case at a later date, you could just launch this again and that would bring it back up. With that done, you can click next and you're done with the wizard workflow. It will take you to the cart where it has placed the kit, the implant, the tubes necessary for this into your cart and you can check out if you've already got those things. Obviously there's no need to do that. And back in the case, you can now close the wizard, and it's going to bring you back to just the standard view in Blue Sky Plan. Uh, this would be more in the normal or the advanced mode, and you could now manually do whatever you wanted. Uh, but that's really the entire process for making a simple surgical guide.